All right, man. You ready for these questions? Yeah. Talking fun with Ed O. Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my ninth episode of Talking Fun with Edo. Welcome to the Edo Coco channel if you're new. And if you're not, welcome back to my second channel called Edo Coco. On today's episode, my special guest is Christina Yu. And here is the interview. Hello, everyone. This is the fourth interview of Talking Fun with Edo with my special guest here named Yu. How are you doing today? How's it going? Thank you for inviting me. Oh, most definitely. How's, how's it been? It's so busy. I just finished my final, the last one yesterday. Right. So I finally have time to accept your invitation. <laughs> no, it's okay. So, um, uh, so one of the things I've been looking upon of the recent project that you, that you were in was called Lollipop. Could you yeah. tell tell me and everyone else what's the project about? So Lollipop is actually uh, it's uh, one short film in a whole series that the director Jared Miller built. Like he built a whole universe for the series. Mm. Like everything, and it's based. It's it's loosely based on Florida. But it's a whole new world. Like uh, it's new. It's the city, the people, the uh, the politicians, the politics, are the including as detailed as the delivery app, like a mapping app. Everything he created, all the details for the new world. So the series is kind of like a a little bit lighthearted crime related. It's basically it basically follows several main uh, person, the main characters in the story explore their way of uh, like having their life in the Rimini city, which is the city where the main uh, story is happening. So this city is a crime riddle city. Gotcha. And yeah, and people, especially poor people, have to find their way to make a living, to like live with their their own demons and live with their, their mental problems, their depression. It's like, it's like a piece of life story, but it's in when you project the the current world into a imaginary world. Hmm. That sounds like a real cool project. Yeah, I hope I summarized it well. I hope Jared won't hate me for saying something. <laughs> I mean, we'll see. <laughs> um so um so how did you uh, get into photography? Like, wh what's your favorite role about it? I mean, like, I always liked to taking photos ever since I grew up. Like, mm. even when I was a little girl, every time my dad was like, oh, I'm going to take a photo, just a regular a family photo. I was like, wait, wait, let me post. <laughs> I need to dance. <laughs> Yes. It's always like that. Then, like I would watch TV and see all the people, how they act in the TV, and then be like, I want to be like them. Like I want to be different. So I yeah, when I had the opportunity, I jumped on it. Like when I came to, uh, back when I was in China, I joined uh, several like uh, modeling groups, mm. like work with trade for photos, work with local photographers. But I didn't really have much time back then because I, I came to America like uh, immediately after my college. How long so ago was really, that? Sorry. Oh, 10 years ago. 10 years? Uh, 2011? Yeah. Wow. That was the year when I came to America. <laughs> so I didn't have that much time because it was just like the last two years in college I got to do that. Because before college, it was all study, very busy study. Gotcha. And then when I came to America, like, uh, when I moved to Orlando, actually, I met my husband, and who, at that time, he was studying theater in mm. Valencia College. So I used to go to auditions and stuff with him, and then, like, I would be waiting in the background, and then the director would like, come talk to me and be like, do you act too? Because I think you'll be perfect for this role. And my husband in the background was like, I came here for auditions. I think it's just like they they don't have that many Asians in this industry in Florida. Gotcha. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I started going to auditions, and then I joined some like photography and modeling group in Florida. Started going to group photo shoots and met some really nice photographers who I like their their style. They they like my style, so we started like scheduling for private sh uh, shooting sections, like photo shoot sections, and then just went from there. And then more people saw my photos, and more people wanted to know like uh, if they can have a session with me. So that's how photo shoot started. And acting, it took a lot longer because, you know, it's like you got to wait for that opportunity, for that role that's perfect for you. And for some reason, even though I live in Orlando, but I think directors in Tampa like me more. <laughs> I get more gigs in Tampa than Orlando for some reason. Like Lo Lollipop is based in Tampa. Mm. And this past weekend, uh, to like the weekend before this weekend, I went to uh, Tampa on the ground film festival. Mm. So uh, TVUFF 2021, the, the, it's a four day film festival and uh, four films I'm involved in, uh, three films I'm involved in was in it. Wow. Yeah, in one film festival and they're all Tampa based. That's crazy. <laughs> Lollipop won best uh, Florida short film and mm. also Audience Choice short film. All right. Um, yeah. is uh, Orlando the first place you visit from America? Uh, no, actually, I started in small town Tuscaloosa, Alabama. <laughs> really, it's also Alabama. <laughs> yeah, it's a roll type school that they gave me full scholarship for a master in biological science. So I was like, okay, I'll go for it. I didn't know what football is before this. Like I know, I know soccer football. Like that's how we, that's what we call football in China. Right. Yeah. I didn't for, know what is like rugby. Yeah, it's rugby, <laughs> soccer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I never watched one single game before, and then I got thrown into Alabama, and then I immediately got into that culture. <laughs> um, speaking of which, um, now in this type of segment we're going to get into like favorites now which is um what was the best thing uh you like from your hometown and what's the best thing you like uh living here well there are too many favorite things in my hometown to be honest <laughs> yeah. like my whole family is there and uh i had all my friends growing up there and i love i actually like the a community feeling back in China, hmm. like take care of each other, and uh, like in Chinese Chinese culture, Asian culture in general, when you see older people, we don't call them by their names; we call them uncle, aunt, grandpa, grandma. So it's it's like the whole society is like a big family. Yeah. And when I came to America, I started missing the like the the family feeling in the in the area in the society i started missing the i need a community so i i need i started building my friend circles so i start I, I need my own community i i'm the type of person that i can't survive by myself even though the older i get the more introvert i get so that my friend group got smaller but i need that group um so I, that would be my favorite thing about my hometown. And hmm. of course, I cannot forget about food. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to um, ask, like, what was your favorite food? Yeah, food and the convenience of getting whatever food I want. Like, everything is delivery. Delivery fee is so cheap. Everything is cheap. Like, the living expenses is so much lower than here. Yeah, my friends, they, like, they, I, I swear they hate me. Like, every time they would get a uh, food delivered, they will get hot pot delivered to their home and then they will post in WeChat. I was like, why you hate me? I want that. <laughs> I can't get that here. <laughs> hmm. Speaking of like uh photography, is there um a like what was like a specific film or specific thing in like entertainment of like whether it involves like music, a television show or like music, like what was the biggest thing that got you in to be like, yes, I want to be in photography? Like, what was the biggest thing that inspired you to be in photography? Uh, I mean, like, like entertainment in general? Yeah. 
So, like, I like to experience different lives because we only live one life. Right. And as an actor, you get to experience so many lives. You get to live as every single character. You get to experience what they experience, feel how they feel with different growing up background, with different circumstances. So that's what really got me into interest in acting, like photography. So even in modeling, I like to create different characters for photography. I don't like just just stand there and be pretty and pose. I like to have my character. I like to do creative stuff. So, like, I think in America, I'd say like my favorite thing about living here is I get more opportunities mm. for acting, being model, and all that. All that. Because in China, basically, I stand no chance. The competition is insane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can only many, imagine, man. <laughs> there are too many people and pretty girls popping up left and right. But here, I'm unique. <laughs> right, just like the the only one. It's like, yep, we're choosing her. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that unique in China, but here I'm unique. And also, I like at 32 years old in China, that's an old age for getting into entertainment industry. Really, 32? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like people like people start young. Yeah, yeah. Like 15, 16 years old in Asia. Right. Like if you if you think about K-pop, like they start training like 10, 10 years old, like 10 to um like pretty much like kind of like first or like kindergarten you know yeah they were by the age of 18 like they are ready to kill it on the stage like, right. when i was 18 like i'm still studying <laughs> yeah <laughs> um yeah, here in america you 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 have a more an opportunity no matter how old you are right um <laughs> uh let me see um so for the note of favorites like um for food you like convenient like convenience store food like anything or just all food i mean china or in america both 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 is fine uh like in in china or in any asia country my favorite convenience store to go to for food is 7-eleven 7-eleven like i can see uh, like dental boxes uh, like all the uh i don't know how to translate those in english like it's know. Kind of like stuff in the in in the stick, and they boil it in the like the really nice broth. Right. Oh, um, okay. Probably like you see them. I think you see them in anime a lot. Yeah, I was also my brain was also thinking about um. Have you ever heard of a? It's like a rap group named uh, Higher Brothers. They had a song called Seven Eleven, I believe. Oh, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll send but, it. It was. <laughs> when I first came to America, like when I saw Seven Eleven for the first time, like one time when I visited New York, I said I saw Seven Eleven. I was like, oh, "Do they have all my favorite food?" I went in there. Nope, hot dogs. Just hot hot dogs, <laughs> like uh, a guy behind the cat. Like all a lot of snacks, but it's like no, I I don't recognize this. Yeah, when they're there, I, with all the excitement of getting all my favorite Seven Eleven like fast food. Nope. <laughs> I was disappointed. <laughs> Why can't they have Seven Eleven food here like they do in, in Asia? I don't know. It's a, I mean, maybe yeah. one day in like the future, maybe ten to twenty years from now, they'll share internet. Like every place will just share an international food besides um yeah. Walmart and like like I I appreciate the mom and pop stores that are down in downtown Florida too. Even like um. One that's kind of close to full cell, sort of, but it's like at the, um, the glasses store. It's called East Asian Market. It just like has pretty much everything. Those areas, yeah. you know. But yeah. one day they'll have like all the food for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is uh your favorite type of music? Music. It depends on the time I guess like mm. back in college I was big into k-pop but now as I get older I become like uh, I miss all the like the music back in the 90s <laughs> of uh, um, American like both American uh, like Chinese, mostly Chinese like especially all the uh, all those Taiwanese singers I grew up with like 
one of your favorite SHE. <laughs> it was, I mean, they are my favorite. It was like my, fr- like, um, back in 2009 was the first time yeah. I, s- I listened to it. It was, um, uh, on that note, like, um, when I was trying to explain it, it was, um, the first time I saw them, it was like, I was looking at this website that's not around anymore called Mega Upload. I was looking for a Japanese artist, and then it just showed me this. And then the song was Ring, 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 Ring from yeah. SHE. I, I was... <laughs> I was... um When they debuted it, I was like four years old. And that song, I was 10 years old. And... um. On that note, when I really gotten into them, it was like the commercial for an online game. My mm-hmm. the the thing that really brought it out was the album that's you know their first album that's now like twenty years old called Translate as Girls Dormitory. My favorite yeah. song is HBO, and I I liked it not because they all sung in English, but it was like an introduction of like who they are and you know in the video i also list my other favorite songs that i really like that i listen from 2011 all the way to right now sorry about that all the way to right now as of 2000 20 years later pretty much so 10 years later is when i got into them and then right now it's like i'm doing a video about them yeah so like basically like uh, pop songs, Chinese pop songs from that hmm? era. They said J Cho. J Cho. J Cho. That's a very familiar name. Um, yeah, he's the one that basically introduced the rap, uh, like uh, rap songs in China. Like really, I yeah. thought it would have been the L A boys. But no, then he, he's the one like started like Chinese style rap songs, mm. like incorporating West, Western style and Chinese style, and have a new basically it's, a, it's his new genre. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really? Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, so he started. He he's he became famous when I was in middle school. Mm. So he's he's all the he's all the, was back still on the like the small cassette tapes. Mm, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm, we know we go in retro back. cassette tapes. Now I'm going back to listening to songs from that time again. Mm. Early 2000s, late 90s. Most definitely. For your YouTube channel, it is called KFC, which is called Kung Fu Couple. How did that name came about? Uh, it's not a YouTube channel, it's a Facebook page. Mm. Oh, it's a Facebook page? Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so me and my husband, when we first started acting, we were like, we need a Facebook page, but I'm too lazy to manage a Facebook page by myself. So I was like, can we just have a Facebook page together? People have been telling us, you need a Facebook page so people can contact you on an official page instead of adding you on Facebook. Right. But I was too lazy to start my own Facebook page. I was like, oh, can I just have a page with you? And, and then we need to think of a cool name for a page. But uh, like English is not my first language. And right, right. My husband, my husband is more uh, uh, goofball than like a serious person. So we can't think of a really ser- cool serious name. So we're like, if we can't go very cool, we can go very corny. At least it will, it will be memorable. Right. So actually, uh, met in Kung Fu, me and my husband, we met in Kung Fu and we both love Kung Fu. And we do like stunt coordinating together. So mm. we thought about we can just put that in our name. So how about just Kung Fu Couple? And then we introduce ourselves. So we'll be like, hey, we're a Kung Fu Couple. And uh, short as uh, like the short name for us is KFC. <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's, it's very corny, but I think we make an impression. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I guess now, um, this is about it. Um, is there, um, any last things you'd like to say for, like, what you want the world to remember you by? Or just any, like, final words? Uh, if I can create one character that 
people would rem remember me of, I would die happy. <laughs> like, I know, like, it's probably impossible for me to become a, a actual, like, an actual legit actress, like, acting as my career. Mm. But if I can create that one character that has made impact in this world, then I will be happy. Mm. Oh, yeah. I just remember something. Uh, is there, like, an inspiring, like, um, actress that you would like to, or anybody you would like to um, collaborate with? collaborate with any time in like the near future or has it already happened well it doesn't definitely haven't happened yet <laughs> so like my favorite my all-time favorite director mm. is, is you remember all those uh like back in the 90s and early 2000s all those uh swordsman stories in china mm, maybe a little bit all those <laughs> Yeah, so that's what actually started my interest in acting. So I, I don't know his name in English, but his Chinese name is Xu Ke. Xu Ke, okay. Yeah, so he's my absolutely all-time favorite director. So if one day I can actually work with him, even if it's just a throwaway character just get killed, in one thing, I would be super happy because, <laughs> like, like, his style is just all those like swordsmen flying, like just cutting the water and boom, 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 water. <laughs> oh, like fearless? Huh? Fearless? Like fear? Not like fearless, right? Oh, it's um, a movie with Jet Li. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Actually. Okay, like that. Okay. Yeah, that style. Like uh, he basically started a new style of Hong Kong cinema. Okay. Uh, like, it went from like actual very realistic hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat to more uh, fantasy-like. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my dream. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for uh, doing this interview, and I'm gonna see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview today. Uh. For the shout outs is not only Christina Yu, but also Wolven Switzwin and Raised on Media. Now the next project coming up is my Tomi Shinohara video report on my first main channel, along with some blooper reels from my previous years of YouTube along with reflections as well and also coming up next along with my own reflection for my first type of year on youtube sorta is the 10th episode featuring drew b and as usual follow me on my social links of twitter instagram and facebook and as usual guys See you next time. Bye-bye.